before we can start deploying configuration and applications and all our Intune stuff to our devices, we need to enroll them into Intune in the first place. There's one main section that we look at for enrolling devices and here we can configure things like enrollment restrictions and a few other things that we need to go through. It also allows us to figure out whether we're going to be enrolling devices from a personal standpoint, so we're we going to allow users to enroll the devices themselves, or do we want to automate the enrollment in some way? Let's jump into the console. We'll take a look in the Intune Admin Center, and just down here we can see devices. And there are two ways to get to the bit I want to get to, and that is, let me just move that over for you. We can go down to enroll devices here, or we can go into Windows, and then take a look at enroll devices from there. So what I'll do is go to Enroll Devices, and here we start out in the, in the Windows section, but we're in the same place. Once we're there, we have these tiles in the middle. And what we can do with these tiles is configure specific things about the enrollment of our Intune tenant. We start out with Automatic Enrollment. Let's jump into that and take a look at what we get. What you'll notice is with this automatic enrollment section, if you watched the previous video around MDM and MAM scope within the Entra portal, this is the same thing. This isn't a copy. This isn't where the setting is also set. This is exactly the same place that it's set. So as you can see, it's set to all for MDM and none for MAM, for mobile application management. And that is because if a device presents itself to Intune, and we want it to enroll, then we need it to enroll. We don't want it to start doing mobile application management instead of enrolling, which is why we said if we need to do MDM with Intune, then we set Intune to all. I guess you could set it to a group and, and have just a group of users that are covered by MDM auto enrollment, but typically in production environments, we'll see, see it set to all, as well as definitely in lab and test environments. So I'm going to leave that as it is. We'll head back to enrollment. Now, what you notice, just a bit of a navigation thing there that I just did without even realizing is I went from enrollment and to go back, you don't go to the one before because that would take you too far back. You go to the one that is directly above. So if we go to the one before, you can see it takes us all the way back to here and went, went, that's not where we want to be. So we'll go back into enroll devices automatic enrollment and to get back to the previous screen you just go to the next one above in that list we'll choose that and we're back to here next you can see we have enrollment notifications if I choose that essentially this is a place where you can set up notifications to go to your users after they enroll their device so let's let's create one and, and take a look at that so I'll choose create notifications give it a name of enrollment complete Let's just choose next and this is going to be a push notification to a user on their windows device whenever they enroll a windows device so i'm going to call it uh, enrollment complete and the message will be your your enrollment of your new windows device is now complete we also send a very similar email to the user as well and there we go. Give it a name of enrollment complete. And we can even pop in the company logo there to prove it's us. So next we will just choose next. Choose next. I'm going to add all users into that group so that when any user enrolls their device, they get a nice message to say they've enrolled their device. Now, obviously, if we just take a look, we could also say, use this personal notification or the email to give users additional information about how they can use their device now it's enrolled. But this is just an example of what you might use it for. I'll assign that to all users and choose create. Okay, so now we're getting a bit further into the configuration. Now we know what happens when a user enrolls their device, well, they get a push notification saying, well done for enrolling your device. Go back. Next, we have a section called Enrollment Status Page. This allows us to show app and profile installation statuses to users during device setup. It sounds like a very good idea. Let's take a look. Right now, we have a standard default priority one, which is assigned to all users and devices. We'll choose properties to see what it looks like. 
And it says, this is a default enrollment status screen configuration applied with the lowest priority to all users and devices, regardless of, of group membership. We are in this profile, not showing app or profile configuration progress at all. And as you can see, it's set to all devices. So really, this is just turning off the enrollment status page. And in a few moments, I'm going to talk to you about why configuring the enrollment status page is a good idea and why it's not. So let's take a look. We are going to, I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to go back to enrollment status page and choose create. I'm going to call it enable ESP enrollment status page and choose next. Now this, this setting I just showed you is show app and profile configuration set to no. If we choose that and choose next, then we're essentially not doing anything at all. So I'm going to choose yes. And this allows us to start configuring the settings within the enrollment status page. The first setting we get is show an error when an installation takes longer than the specified number of minutes. If users are deploying a device and enrolling their device, and it takes longer than X, in this case on the screen is 60 minutes, then we want to show an error. In this case, that's, that's what we're setting here. It could be that we want to allow it to run for 120 minutes or 240. It doesn't really matter because the maximum is fairly high, which is 1440 by the looks of it, uh, which is a long, long time to be building a device. 60 is probably okay, because after 60 minutes, something has probably gone wrong, and we might want to show an error message. If you are deploying very large applications during, uh, during the device deployment, or if you are working with the users on a slow connection, you might need to extend that a little bit so we don't just error out before it's ready. You can see we can set a custom message at the end of that timeout period, which says something like setup couldn't be completed, try again or contact your support person for help. Very simple. We can turn on log collection and diagnostic page for end users. So if the user gets to the stage where there's an error, then they can gather the diagnostics and send it over to the admin if they need to. That's, that's what we set here. We can also set whether this enrollment, this enrollment status page is present on devices when they're building from when they're enrolling from an already built stage or just from the out of box experience. It's typical that you would only want to show it when there's a significant delay in the build and that's usually during the out of box experience. So we'll choose yes here and then it won't show us the enrollment status page when we enroll a device that's already built. We can also block the device use until apps and profiles are installed. And if we leave it set to yes, as it is here, then these additional three settings below it are enabled. If we choose no, then those three settings below it go away. I do want to talk about those three settings, so I'm going to have to choose yes again, and we can go through them. So if the device has an issue and the, the device errors during the installation, we can allow users to reset the device. That is probably a good idea to get users back up and running without them having to contact support. If we also look at the next one, which is allow users to use the device even if an installation error occurs, it doesn't sound as good to me. If an installation error has occurred, then we may not have the correct security or applications deployed to the device. It's probably not a good idea to allow them to crack on and use it, because if they do, then they'll have a less than good user experience, most likely. I'm going to set no for that. And then back here, we can see this setting which looks very similar to the one three above it. It says, block device use until required apps are installed if they're assigned to the user or device, which is a very similar way of saying block device use until all apps and profiles are installed. Except it's slightly different because what we get the option here of is setting all or selected. Now let's say we want, we have, we're installing 10 applications during the build. And one of them is Office 365, one of them is an antivirus product, one of them is 7-Zip, and then we have Notepad++ and various other applications that we want to get on the device when the device is built. But only a couple of those are critical. 7-Zip and Notepad++ are unlikely to be used as soon as the device gets switched on, and they really could be installed within an hour or half an hour of the device being built. But Things like antivirus and office are very likely to be needed right at the start of that user experience. So we should set those as being required before the device can be used. We do that by choosing selected and then choose select apps and choose the applications. 
So for example, in this case, I would say Edge is a critical application that I want to install before the user can use their device. I'll choose Select. But that's pretty much the only one that I'm going to select because the other ones in my list here, and we haven't, remember we haven't created applications as a part of this course yet, are 7-zip and Notepad++. And really, they're not critical, like I said. So this will only prevent device usage until Edge is installed. Now, we might want to add more applications there, and we have an apps section in this course to talk through that in more detail. Now, to deploy this, we just choose Next, assign it to all devices, and choose Next, and Next, and Create. Now we have an ESP with a higher priority than the default, which enables the ESP and sets it to the settings that we've just been through.